exercise can be very beneficial for our mental health. But how you exercise might lead to different results, at least according to a new research paper. So let's see how we can improve our mental health in the best way possible with exercise. There's no doubt that mental health requires a great deal of our attention. After all, our mental health can have profound impacts on relevant fitness factors like motivation, performance, sleep, and nutrition. On the bright side, it has become abundantly clear that physical activity can indeed improve mental health, notably improving symptoms of two highly prevalent mental health disorders in depression and anxiety. But if we want to achieve the best outcomes in this matter, then adjusting certain attributes of our exercise can and make a difference, at least according to this 2023 systematic review. After conducting a thorough search of the scientific literature, the researchers found 97 relevant studies for this topic, spanning 1,039 unique randomized control trials with a total of nearly 130,000 participants. Overall, quite a big set of data, so let's see what they discovered. First, as mentioned, physical activity has a clear, moderate effect on improving mental health, which we can easily visualize with this forest plot on depressive symptoms. Every point left of this vertical dashed line indicates a study showing favorable outcomes with physical activity, which is quite a lot. And in this figure, we see just about the same this time for anxiety. The findings also show that any adult population can improve their mental health with physical activity and interestingly, both adults diagnosed with depression and adults deemed generally healthy saw some of the best outcomes. But let's get to the good stuff, and that's the physical activity itself. What exactly works best? Surprisingly, the type of activity you do, whether it's lifting weights, cardio, dancing, yoga, and so on, doesn't seem to matter. Instead, what does seem to matter is the dose of exercise, like the intensity and duration. In this case, the data shows that the following provided the largest benefits. Exercising at moderate to high intensities, exercising 150 minutes or fewer per week, and exercising only 12 or fewer weeks in total. Now, the researchers can't say exactly why these achieve the best outcomes, but they do have a few guesses. For moderate to high intensities, the better improvements might be explained by the increased release of hormones like serotonin during rigorous physical activity, resulting in improvements in mood. For the 150 or fewer minutes of activity per week, it is a somewhat surprisingly low figure, but also makes sense in terms of adherence. Simply put, working out longer is just more physically and psychologically exhausting making it tougher to stick to than shorter bursts. And there's the length of the entire exercise intervention. In the data, it was observed that exercising for 12 weeks or fewer was most beneficial, and benefits diminished the longer you exercise. A simple guess as to why is the novelty of exercise. In the beginning, going to the gym can be exciting, especially once you start making good progress a few weeks in. But that novelty of exercise eventually wears off, especially if you're progress slows down and the initial psychological effects you experience begin to wane and you start feeling less motivated to exercise. But of course, for our general health, long-term exercise is important, so we definitely want people to keep exercising. There's no clear way to tackle this, but first it's important to understand that even though the benefits diminish, mental health benefits were still observed in long-term interventions. But if we want to keep things interesting, I personally would try switching things up. Up. For example, if you're bored of doing cardio all the time, then switching to lifting weights for a few months might make things interesting again. And maybe, like so many people have, including myself, you'll fall in love with lifting weights and never get tired of it. But if you do, you can try something else again later. But there you have it, the answer to how you can get the most out of your exercise for mental health, at least according to this research. Now, to be absolutely clear, you do not need to meet these parameters. Sure, these parameters did observe the largest benefits, but all other parameters still observed benefits as well. Plus, this is only one study, although a big one. But it also means you personally may very well benefit more from a different set of parameters. That said, if you do have the capacity, it might be worth just trying 
trying these out and see how it goes. Maybe start off easy with 150 weekly exercise minutes first and then work in the others down the line. Wherever you may be in your life, I do wish you the very best in not just your fitness endeavors, but everything else. And I hope this video provided you at least some help with that. That said, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a helpful thumbs up and share it with your exercise loving friends. Link to the full study is in the description. As always, thank you for watching and don't forget to get your protein.